And we're back. All right. I'm going to show you how we solve this problem here. So we have two groups. We're looking for a difference, right? This time, our group sizes are the same. Right? We need to find the mean and the variance for each group. So we already know our sample size for group one is six, and our sample size for group two is six. So I add up all the scores, divide by my sample size. That gives me the mean, right? So I'm going to do that. So 5, 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 7 is 21, plus 8 is 29, 29 divided by 6, 4.8333. Jose, why did you write it out to five decimal places? Remember, the table has three decimal places. So my answer has to have three decimal places. If I want my answer to be accurate to three decimal places, my work needs a minimum of five decimal places. That's why my answer has five decimal places, right? So, using 4.333 as my mean, three minus 4.833333, here's my difference, here's my difference squared. I do that all the way down. Here is the sum of the differences squared, also known as the sum of the squares. The sum of the squares divided by five, my degrees of freedom, and minus one gives me my variance. To, to five decimal places, it's 5.36667. Now I gotta do this side, right? Remember, I need three pieces of information from here. The sample size, so I can calculate my degrees of freedom. The mean, which is gonna go in the numerator, and the variance, which is going to go throughout the denominator. All right, now this side. So it's 5 plus 4, 9, plus 6 is 15, 24, 31, plus 8 is 39, divided by 6. 6.5 is the mean, right? 5 minus 6.5 is negative 1.5, negative 1.5 squared is 2.25. This is the difference, this is the difference squared. All of this work is to find the total, the sum of the squares, the sum of the difference in squared, divided by my degrees of freedom, divided by six minus one divided by five, here's my variance, 3.5. All right, so I have the information that I need. I have the mean, the variance, and the sample size for both groups. I plug this information into my formula, right? Here's my formula. I wrote my formula out. I plug the numbers into my formula, right? Remember, if I did this correctly, when I multiply my degrees of freedom times my sum of the squares, what do I get? I'm sorry, when I multiply my degrees of freedom against the variance, what do I get? I get the sum of the squares back, right? Now look, I'm going to show you another little trick. When the sample sizes are the same, this answer will simplify to a simpler fraction, right? 6 plus 6 is 12, 6 times 6, right, is 36. So in this case, it reduces down to a third. Why is that important? Because now, when I multiply across, Right? I get this really easy number to work with, right? Remember, smaller numbers are easier to work with. So, here's my square root, 44 and a third divided by 30. It's underneath the difference, negative 1.66. 666, six, 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 one, negative one and two thirds, right? Remember, the square root symbol does not disappear until after you have only one number underneath it. I want my answer to be correct to three decimal places. That's why this answer is to five, I solve for it, and I get an answer of negative 1.371. But remember, your table doesn't have any negative numbers. And we're looking for a difference, right? So our answer could be negative or it could be positive. This time it became negative. So what are we gonna do? When we compare this number against the critical value, we're going to take the absolute value of this answer. So, let me interpret this. So, what was T? T 
with nine degrees of freedom equaled what? Right, it equaled this answer here, right, to three decimal places. It was negative 1.371, right? What was the critical value for each tail? What is the critical value for each tail? Well, remember, we're looking for a difference. So we're gonna do it again, we're gonna do a two-tail test, right? Right? We need to determine the degrees of freedom. What was our degrees of freedom? It was the answer that's right here in the formula. It's the total sample size minus the number of groups. 12 minus two is 10. So our degrees of freedom is going to be 10, right? And what's the third thing we need to know? What's the size of alpha? What are we gonna use until further notice? 5%, 0.05. So we have everything we need to do to look up our critical value, right? What do you decide to do? In other words, how do you interpret your results or your obtained value? Which cells get a non-significant? Which ones get a star, an asterisk? Which ones are significant? All right, let's go ahead and fill out our critical value, our critical value table here. Let's fill it out. Let's see which results are gonna be significant or non-significant. 